Uh, very good morning, uh, good afternoon and good evening to all the participants and the students for this course titled Multi-Criteria Decision Making, which is on the NPTEL MOOC series and my good name is Raghunandan Sangupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur. And as you know this course is spread over 12 weeks, which is 60 lectures, each lecture being for half an hour and as the information is all there with you, each week we have 5 lectures of half an hour each. So, the broader outlines for this 37th lecture is as follows, which we have been doing it for a long set of weeks, is about multi criteria decision making as the main topic under which we have been discussing multi objective decision making with different examples multi attribute decision making and multi attribute utility theory. About the concept of theory we said that we will discuss that when we start the non parametric methods. So, the general uh, ideas or problems we have considered is the uh, set of problems in the initial set if you remember in the int introduction we had discussed both pictorially as well as solving the problems, uh, quadratic programming then took binary uh, two different objective functions by objective case and the constraints were all uh, linear. Then we went into discussion of the concept of using linear programming with linear constraints, then integer programming with linear constraints and we did discuss the two different important concepts of multi objective programming. We took only two problems multi objective programming, where the idea was to discuss that how we can either give weights to the objective functions. So, con consider the convex combination of the of the objective functions or else consider the objective functions in such a way that uh, when objective function 1 is considered in, in the objective, 2 and 3 would be considered at a part and parcel of the constraints. And we did consider a problem where these combinations were taken, both where weights were given as well as when objectives were one at a time considered as part and parcel of the constraints also. So, now we will expand our discussion and consider a whole set of ideas, but the example will be given in one and it, you will understand all the things in details, which is the bi objective quadratically constrained quadratic programming. So, as the name says is uh, here we have a bi objective case, because there are two objectives and if you look at the problem it will make sense to you. The problem which I will keep highlighting the basic idea is this. So, there are two objectives, one is the quadratic part and one is the linear part. Now, the concept which you see is half, it is just a constant, it would not matter. The reason being that when you want to basically optimization mean what? You are trying to optimize or trying to find out the maximum and the minima and then you differentiate. So, as this function has a quadratic component of x square. So, when you differentiate it becomes 2 x. So, that 2 and half cancel out that is the only simple way of trying to explain that. So, you have one again to repeat one component which is quadratic and the other component which I will highlight using the green color is the linear part. Remember one thing in this case the x transpose p and then x then q transpose x all are vectors or matrices accordingly like x transpose and x are vectors q transpose obviously is, is a vector and p which with a not with the initial uh, not the initial value a set of values p is basically a matrix so obviously depending on the size matrix multiplication and the rules should apply in the sense that 
if x is basically a vector which is of size p cross 1. So, in that case x transpose would be of size 1 cross p which means p means small p and in and and next p capital p naught obviously you have to pre multiply p naught with x transpose. So, p naught has to be small p cross p. So, this this is a multiplication sign and hence so on the on the minimization side which you are trying to minimize it is basically 1 cross p into p cross p which is 1 cross p then 1 cross p into again x which is p cross 1 gives you a scalar. And similarly, when I try to find out q transpose x, so in that case as x is p cross 1, q obviously has to be 1 cross p to give the corresponding result also for the linear part of the scalar. So, it will basically a sum of two scalar quantities which you want to basically minimize. Now, uh, when I was discussing, I did mention the word minimization here. So, here rather than using the word minimization, maybe it would have been apt for um, from my part to use the word optimization, but minimization can also be considered as a maximization problem with the science conversion happening, which you all know who are taking this course and who have the requisite background in operation research. So, maximization and minimization are just opposite like a mirror, they are opposite sides on the mirror. Now, if you consider the const constraints, so it is a bi objective, so it has been explained two parts quadratic linear. Now, it is a quadratically constrained quadratic programming and why constraints are quad quadratic is as for the following reason. You have again a quadratic component in such this condition and this p suffix i that is also a matrix because if you consider x transpose multiplied by p which is a matrix multiplied by x obviously the same concept of matrix rule multiplication based on the rows and columns should hold and this this i would basically depend on the the number of such constraints are there so as you see i is equal to 1 to m so m is 3 so, I will be 1, 2, 3 that means there would be 3 such constraints. The second part would be which I am highlighting using the violet color. So, this is the constraint which consists the linear component part corresponding to x and uh, that also matrix multiplication vector vector multiplication concept should hold and the last term onto the left hand side of the less than equal to sign is r i which is basically there would be r 1, r 2, r 3 depending on m is 3 is a constant such that is the less than type. So, obviously, the question would be immediately which you would have understood by the way of explanation I have been doing. If it is less than type then obviously, you can convert into greater than type or the greater than type is there can be converted into less than type equality can be added with a less than type greater than type 2 equations. Why I am mentioning that? Because many of these optimization tools which you will use presupposes that how you give the constraints. So, the problems which I am solving have been solved in R. So, if you check R, I am not say sharing the codes, I am only sharing the results. So, if you check with the uh, the R codes, they are specifically mentioned whether it is linear programming uh, package you are using, non-linear programming, quadratic programming, integer programming. So, obviously, the constraints have to be written very specifically uh, depending on how the, the code has been written. And another part of the equality concept is which I will use again a different color a x is equal to b. So, obviously, if it is equality to i can be converted into less than type greater than type. So, overall framework is uh, 
quadratic component in the objective function, linear component in the objective function in the constraints also quadratic and linear components there. So, in mathematical optimization or quadratically constrained quadratic programming which is QCQP is an optimization problem formulation in which both the objective functions and the constraints are quadratic in functions. In its general form, it is written like this which I explained. So, first I did the explain and then, then I read what is written in the slide. Now, one by one I will give you all the flavors and then solve a problem in details. Now, if you see the slide, obviously the slides are being shared with all the participants and the students who are taking this course. If you see, it is mentioned very specifically with different color coding scheme, it is like this. So, the linear, it is basically a linear programming with both linear and quadratic constraints if the component which is half q transpose p naught x is not there as I am underlying here it mentions. If it is not there, then you have a linear programming with quadratic constraints. So, obviously, there can be different type of flavors of the pro problems. To give an example, what example I will solve is a very simple one which will give you a lot of idea. But example can be say for example, in the area of finance, you want to rather than minimize, minimize as I said it can be converted into maximization problem also. You maximize the return of the portfolio subject to the case that the risk should be less than equal to some stipulated value. So, this type of problems what I mentioned qualitatively can be structured as given in the slide where the quadratic component for the objective function is not there. So, it is a linear programming with both linear and quadratic constraints. Next case is where I have a quadratic programming with both linear and quadratic constraints, so with which means the linear component q transpose x is not there. Again the same type of in the area of the example which I am considering, you are considering the minimization of the risk because risk which is variance is a quadratic term while return is a linear term. So, if q transpose x is not there which I just circled in red, it is not there, then you minimize the risk and subject to constraints are quadratic as well as linear. Linear would be where you want the returns to be more than equal to some stipulated value as well as the risk to be less than equal to some stipulated value. The idea which I just mentioned about the constraints would also hold for the, the, the problem which we just discussed where it was trying to maximize the return subject to the constraints which is both for the risk as well as the return. When, when I word use the word the risk is basically related to the variance. The third flavor of the same problem is where you have linear and quadratic programming in the objective function, but the constraints are linear. So, if you remember the first problem which we have solved in the introduction part, it was basically trying to maximize and the equations were related to f1 and f2, wherever f1 and f2 were that of a circle. So, if you consider here also you want to minimize or maximize again that can be changed depending on the problem. The objectives are, are quadratic and the constraints are linear. Now, if you again going back to the problem which we have uh, discussed in the introduction part, the constraints were all linear in nature on a Cartesian coordinate. So, this flavor of the problem can be where you do not have the quadratic component of the constraints. So, half x transpose p i x is not there. So, it is basically a problem of that sort and we will solve a problem of this type within few minutes. The fourth flavor of the problem is where the corresponding concepts related to in the constraints which is quadratic and the constant term whether r i is there or not there would not matter because it can be less than equal to 0 or less than equal to minus r i depending on r i is removed to the right hand side that would depend on what type of uh, qualitative information is there about the problem. So, here this q transpose x 
plus r i is not there, but the objective function remains as it is. It is a part of quadratic, part of linear, while the constraints are all corresponding to the case that they are all quadratic. Quadratic means when I am using the word quadratic linear to the constraints, I am not talking about a x equal to b. That is there, that can be there or that need not be there. So, depending on if it is there or not there, the concept of equality constraints I would be discussing. So, in this case, if constraints all the concepts of the linearity part is removed, only quadratic part is there, then obviously a x is equal to b is also not there. But as I am highlighting the quadratic part, the linear part in the less than equal to constraint as, as well as going back to the objective function, that is why my fo focus of discussion is the objective function and the set of constraints which is i is equal to 1 to m. So, the similar logic if I talk about a x is equal to b can also be included or not included and if it is not included along with q transpose x being not there. So, obviously, the constraint is absolutely totally quadratic in nature, there is no linear component in the constraint. Now, we will solve a problem and as I said, these problem solutions are based on basic concept of optimization and of level 1, that means any master's level courses or in bachelor's if they do and uh, uh, specialized courses in op operational research and the discussions about what books can be used, which are good books, which are old, but they are very classic books. I had discussed that in the first class. So, considering that all the st participants and the students are generally aware of these concepts, um, I am as, as usual, I am not going to the actual problem solution like using linear programming either using Karmakas Interpol and algorithm or these gradient descent methods for the quadratic programming. I did mention these words, but these are different type of, of uh, algorithms which are there to solve this nonlinear linear programming. I will directly come into the solution as I have been doing for other uh, different lectures also. So, here you have uh, the consider the first is a uh, being the linear as well as the quadratic programming problem. Now, where the problem is interesting is this. The component related to the objective function, it consists of both linear and quadratic component. How quadratic? So, I will mark them with one color at a time. So, I am putting a tick mark for the blue where the quadratic component is. First half x 1 square, x 2 square and minus of x 1, x 2. So, the sign of plus minus is just I said, but it would not matter. What is important is to look that there are x's which are quadratic three terms x 1 square, x 2 square, x 1, x 2. Linear part which I will mark in light blue is x 1 and x 2 here. So, it is basically combination of quadratic and linear part. Now, let us come to the constraints. Constraints are the, I am only considering the linear components. The constraints are like this, which is x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 2, x 1 plus x 2. So, the common, the minus x 1 plus 2 x 2 is less than equal to 2 and 2 x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 3 and x 1 x 2 are on the real line. That means, for simplicity they are positive. So, that means, they would be can be considered as uh, continuous can be considered as uh, integers also. Now, considering this problem I solve them and consider continuous variables. So, when I solve them, the value of these two decision variables come as I will use the, so they come as 0.67 and 1.33. And when I put the values of, of 
0.67 which is I can consider as one third and this I can consider as one and one third. So, if I put them in the equation objective function f 1 the value comes out to be minus 8.36 we are minimizing it remember not maximizing. So, how would the look like this uh, graph I have drawn again using r and if you consider is a three dimensional one I have tried my level base to draw it and I will mark the axis for better understanding and better communication uh, between me and the students who are taking this course. So, along this axis which I am drawing that means, here I take variable x 1. So, on the plane where I am standing is basically the x 1 is being measured. x 2 variable is going from my side towards you towards the camera. So, and they are orthogonal. So, it is basically like this x 2 is going towards you x 1 is on the right and the functional value f 1 I am measuring vertically up. So, if I consider the corner of the room going towards the roof is f 1 from that corner of the room coming towards uh, me or going towards you depending I have considered x 2 and from the corner of the room going to the right considering the point is on my left is x 1. Now, if I consider that the constraints which were given here, let me mark them one by x 1 plus x 2 less than equal to 2. So, if it is x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 2. So, if I consider these values x 1 and x 2, the corresponding value which I would have and minus x 1 plus 2 x 2 minus x 1 plus 2 x 2 is equal to less than equal to 3 and finally, 2 x 1 plus x 2 2 x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 3. So, if I plot them accordingly here in the diagram which as you can see there is one light yellow plane this one which I put a single tick mark and there is a light pink plane which I put a double tick mark and there is a light green plane where I put a triple tick mark. Now, if you imagine obviously, they are opaque. So, it is difficult to visualize, but if they are transparent or translucent then you can think of these planes as a case where you have all the values of corresponding to these three planes which give you the boundary of the, the surface or the feasible region in considering the case where I am plotting this graph. And technically you can say that it could have been done in the two dimensional one I, I, I agree, but in this case I am plotting the function f along the, the third dimension. So, if I consider minimization problem again this whole white grid which you see is the function and it is quadratic in nature. So, depending on that it is like a, like a hammock or like a net structure and if you see that the minimum point would be such that it is negative that means, the values of, of x 1 and x 2 are the f value is negative, but the value of x 1 and x 2 are 2 third and 1, one and 1 third. So, depending on that the value would give you somewhere. So, x 1 is here that side and x 2 is also here. So, it will be some point here which is negative negative value being 8.36. So, based on that I can find the values of the objective function. Now, I consider a second objective function 
and consider the second is where again you have the quadratic part which is marked I am marking in this dark red x 1 square 4 x 2 square are quadratic component and the other blue one which I am marking is I am not reading the, the constants which is basically x 1 and x 2 constant if I read it will be minus x 1 8 x 1 minus 16 x 2 and that would be the linear part and if I consider the constraints they are exactly the same. So, x 1 plus x 2 is less than or equal to 2 minus x 1 plus 2 x 2 is less than or equal to 2 and 2 x 1 plus x 2 is less than or equal to 3 and obviously x 1 and x 2 are um, positive. If I solve this problem again quadratic objective function with and also a linear component of the objective function with linear constraints the value comes out to be which is 0 0.8 for x 1 and 1.2 for x 2 and the objective function is minus 19.2. So, both the x 1 and x 2 for the first objective which gives the minimum value and x 1 and x 2 uh, which gives you the minimum for the second objective being minimum are different 0.1 and obviously, f 1 and f 2 if I consider they are also different as they are different objective functions form formulation are different. Now, if I plot it again, so the first constraint which was there x 1 plus x 2 less than or equal to 2 then you have minus x 1 plus 2 x 2. less than equal to 2 and third one is this one would be x 1 2 x 1 plus x 2 <coughs> is less than equal to 3. So, if I see the constraints again same thing one light yellow part the green and the pink yellow light pink yellow constraint and the last one being the light green one. Again if they are if you can visualize them they are opaque, but if you visualize them to be transparent translucent, you can understand all the three constraints have been denoted accordingly. Now, the objective function is not totally different. So, the mesh which you see or the net type of uh, graph which you see here is basically the objective function 2 and as usual I am measuring x 1 going from my left to the right, x 2 going from my side towards you or towards the camera and f 1, f 2 is being measured vertically from the bottom to the top. Again I am trying to draw the, the objective function along with the constraints. Now, comes the interesting part. So, in the, the interesting part is I will consider the bi objective problem and the bi objective problems I mark them with. So, I will put weights lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, this is lambda 1 weight for the first function and I use a different color lambda 2 is for the second function which is f 2. So, this is f 2. So, f 2 was basically this one and if I consider f 1 the constraints are all the same. So, constraints are this is x 1 plus x 2 less than 2 minus x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than 2. 2 x 1 plus x 2 is less than 3 and only other information which will change accordingly is basically lambda 1 lambda 2 is between 0 and 1 both inclusive and sum is 1. Now, when lambda 1 is 0 then obviously all the weights is on function 2 
when lambda 1 is 1 all the weight is in function 1. So, obviously, when lambda 1 is 1 you solve the first problem which I has discussed and lambda 1 is 0 where which means that lambda 2 is 1 we solve the second problem where f 2 is being solved as a single objective. First case f 1 is being solved as a single objective. Now, I solve it and I will discuss the answers later first, but first let me understand how the, the values of x 1 and x 2 would look like. Now, read the what the graph says. The graph gives you the value of lambda 1 along the x axis, the values of x 1 and x 2 which is the decision variables along the y axis and you see the graph which I will use one as a red color. So, this is the graph which gives me the value of x 1 as I solve and the green one which I will mark gives the value of x 2. So, depending on lambda values I would solve find out the minimum value. So, if lambda 1 is point see for example, 2. So, consider point 2, then in that case I will basically weight function 1 with point 2 and I will give the weightages for function 2 as point 8. So, I solve it and when I solve it I will get the values of x 1 and x 2. So, those x 1 and x 2s are being marked here. I have not written the values, but we will discuss that accordingly in the corresponding class. Uh, with this, I will end this class and discuss further about the this bi-objective quadratically constrained quadratic programming with the example which we are discussing. Thank you very much and have a nice day.